Okay, an instant reaction to the Ravens and the Texans in the divisional round. A dominant performance by Lamar Jackson, this Ravens defense. Really, that to me, the Ravens defense today just shut down Houston the entire afternoon. It was one of the more dominant performances uh, you know they've probably had all season long considering the offense they were going against. C.J. Stroud, the regular season leader in passing yards per game, if you don't include Kirk Cousins and Joe Flacco in that stat. And uh, this this Ravens team was after them all day long. Outside of you know really a, a tiny stretch there in the second quarter where Houston was moving the ball well, this Ravens team shut them down the entire afternoon. And they, they forget about running the football. Uh, right now, there's 31-10 late in the fourth quarter here, so these numbers might change a little bit. But on the ground, 31 rushing yards for Houston compared to 228 for Baltimore. And uh, this Ravens team, to me today, looked like a Super Bowl team. We've talked about the problems Lamar Jackson has had in the playoffs, that this Ravens team has had in the playoffs. And in the first half, it, I'm not going to lie, there were some moments where I'm sure Ravens fans Felt a little bit shaky. At 10 10 at halftime, could have been 13 10 with the Fairbank kick uh, going wide right there, right before halftime. I'm sure that a lot of Ravens fans started to think, uh, he, here we go again, potentially. And that third quarter, Baltimore just came out and talk about, you know, taking over the game here. Look at these drives six plays, 55 yards, touchdown. 12 plays, 93 yards, touchdown. That was the one that felt like. It took the life away from Houston in this one. And then uh, an 11-play, 78-yard touchdown to really blow this this thing open at 31-10. Uh, Lamar Jackson on the day goes, goes, <laughs> goes for over 100 yards on the ground, or 11 carries for 100 yards and two touchdowns, 16-22, 152 yards and two touchdowns. Remember, these numbers might change a little bit. There's about four minutes left as of this recording. Uh, but he looked great uh, outside of that one spot in the second quarter, really, where the Houston defense locked down and got after him. Other than that, Lamar was brilliant the entire day. And it, during that time in the second quarter, though, you know, Houston fans probably got excited because all of a sudden they were shutting down Baltimore and moving the ball well themselves. Now, I was impressed by the resiliency of this Ravens team. You saw Lamar go into the locker room at halftime a little bit early before the before the clock hit zero, looking frustrated. Uh, and for the response they had in the third quarter l leading into the fourth, I mean, they just pushed around Houston the entire second half primarily. The, the offensive line was dominant. You saw Ronnie Staley out there or uh, Stanley out there <laughs> just pushing around cornerbacks on uh, runs to the outside for Lamar Jackson. It was a uh, a great performance and a sigh of relief for these Ravens fans to have you know this fantastic 13 and four year. You're the one seed. We've seen so many of these collapses. They just looked like an absolute Super Bowl team to me today. Uh, and I'm not sure, you know, the Ravens uh, or the Bills and Chiefs watching this aren't a little nervous to go into Baltimore. That stadium was rocking. All the penalties. I mean, we'll go to the Houston side for a second here. Those penalties time and time again just killed them, especially when you're on the road in a tough environment against the number one seed. It was great to have the special teams play, the punt return touchdown. You need things like that to happen. But on the reverse side, you can't continuously put yourself behind the chains. How many times did it feel like Houston would cross into Baltimore territory and jump off and then have a false start? Um, not sure how many holding penalties there were, but there were a couple poor play calls that set them back five yards. And this Ravens defense didn't allow anything all night. So you, you couldn't afford it. Um, throughout most of the evening, it was it's tough for them in those situations. It just felt like if, if something were to happen, it was going to be because CJ Stroud is incredible, uh, not because this offense was playing completely as a whole. The the ground game was really really tough tonight. Singletary, <laughs> twenty two yards on nine carries. Team thirty one rushing yards total. They just couldn't get anything going uh, with the rushing attack. And CJ Stroud, for as many times this year as he has looked superhuman and he tried his best but there just wasn't a lot going tonight uh, a lot of the guys who have stepped up lately like nico collins has looked awesome uh, looked pedestrian today against a really really good baltimore team i know a lot of baltimore fans have felt that this show has not been giving the ravens the credit they deserve um, i wouldn't say that that was always the case there were some situations where we were picking against them because we thought the team they were playing is good but today like loud and clear you guys looked like the best team 
in the National Football League uh, for in that second half there. It just nothing that Houston could do at all to uh, to stop you guys and, or to move on you. And that's, I mean, when, when you guys are playing like that, I don't know if there's anyone in the league, maybe San Francisco, but we saw what you did to them earlier in the year. Uh, the, the physical power of this Ravens team cannot be overstated. It is dominant. And <laughs> and that's a uh, a tough team to go and play, especially on the road. For Houston as a whole on the season, you know, a lot of Texans fans have listened to this podcast and we really appreciate me, Ziggy, Jack, and Zach. We really appreciate everybody who's been tuning in throughout the season. What an unbelievable year. You know, to go 10-7 and seven with a rookie quarterback and a rookie head coach given the expectations that you had and um, really the lack of star power on this team heading into the season, it's just one of the more impressive runs that I can recall seeing in the National Football League, at least in my lifetime from when I've started watching football. Just a great, great year and very good days ahead if you're a Houston Texans fan. You know, go and, and get a couple more weapons there maybe. Remember, Tank Dell wasn't playing in this game, so I really didn't play, what, final five, six games, five games maybe this year. I can't remember when he got hurt. Um, but a bright future ahead for the Texans with a, a coach that that team seems to really rally behind, a smart head coach. Uh, the defense, again, when they are getting pressure, that's what we said they had to do in order to win this game is get to Lamar, take him down. They did that for a little bit. But you go and get some more guys for that defense now. We're talking about something special in Houston. So to wrap this up here, 31-10 right now, Baltimore with two minutes left. Again, I'm not watching at the moment. We'll see if the score changes there, but just a uh, a great, great day to be a Ravens fan. One of the more dominant games of this postseason right here where they absolutely exerted themselves on Houston in, in the second half. Uh, looking ahead, though, for Baltimore, real quick, try and think if I would potentially take since, uh, Kansas City or Buffalo over them, and I don't think I would uh, after after watching this today. Zay Flowers a couple times gets the ball and just looks so much like Tyreek Hill, even with the jump back, the explosiveness and that rushing attack. You know, they've lost a lot of guys this year with J.K. Dobbins, Keaton Mitchell, but they keep bringing <laughs> people keep stepping up. Gus Edwards and Justice Hill have been there for a while. And there were times in the second half where they just looked unstoppable. They were plowing over people. And when you add that to Lamar Jackson's threat on the ground, you're talking about a team that is really, really difficult to stop. And that's what's so unique about Lamar Jackson is when he's running like this, you know, you have to bring guys into the box. You just have to. And he's able to pick you apart then with his arm as well. It's a, uh, a tough offense to stop. Todd Munkin has done a phenomenal job changing this unit from what they looked like last year into the, one of the more explosive offenses in the NFL. 34-10 now. Uh, Ravens just got a field goal. So, we we saw a dominant Ravens performance here. Not sure how any of these teams are planning on slowing them down or scoring on them <laughs> going forward. It's going to be a tough team to beat, but the Ravens finally feel like that Super Bowl team that we've been waiting for for so many years. This finally feels like the team that could get the job done. And you know maybe it's a thing for the Harbaugh's winning together uh, with Jim and John both getting championships this year. But this is the first time in a while now where the Ravens in the playoffs have showed up and just dominated. And uh, they got an AFC championship game out of it. Feels like it might be Lamar Jackson's time. Uh, we'll be back with more reacting to the 49ers and Packers later today. Hope you enjoyed this. Leave some comments. Subscribe to the channel, please. We'll be talking a lot more Ravens now that they advanced. And don't worry, we'll also have Texans content coming out about their offseason little season review, a lot more to come. So we appreciate everybody who's been listening and we'll see you later tonight.